How's it going, guys, and welcome back to part four of my Ultimate Amara Guide. In this part, we're going to be covering some of her specific stows in her trees, which require damage formulas, to give you a little look into some more behind the scenes of what's going on with Amara's math, and to maybe give you some ideas on how to make some goofier builds with Amara. So before we get into it, this video is a bit of a follow-up to the last part, in which I already gave a quick refresher on damage formulas. If you would like that refresher, or have yet to learn about damage formulas, I would recommend either watching that last part or the dedicated damage formula video. As for some other quick information before we get started here, all of these stills will have their base damage listed on their respective cards. In the formulas, I will just list it as base damage though, as base damage changes with more points into the still. Also keep in mind that global elements, things like URAD or the Revolter, will also apply to all of these. To calculate the bonus element for any of the following formulas, simply add the percentage of the bonus element as a multiplier to the base damage. Now the first four stills that we're going to talk about all use the same damage formula, being base damage times 31 for the Mayhem Staling, times still damage, times elemental, times splash, times V1, V2, and then weapon debuffs and our still debuffs. Now actually individually going over the stills that use this damage formula, first we have Free the Soul, where whenever Amara kills a frozen enemy, splinters will fly out from that enemy and home into nearby enemies. The splinters always deal cryo damage and this still has a 3 second cooldown. Now this still can deal pretty solid damage and often will, however it also has a 75% cryo efficiency on top of it, allowing it to freeze enemies pretty damn often. So Free the Soul can be very solid damage and utility. Next up is Tharsis, which whenever Amara kills an enemy which has been inflicted by a status effect, it will create an explosion for each status effect that they had applied to them. This still has an 8 second cooldown. It's good supplemental damage here and there, and definitely good for further spreading dots around, but I wouldn't really ever recommend putting more than a couple points in here to move down her tree. Two and others fires out an orb of Amara's attuned element when Amara takes damage. This orb will home around nearby enemies and has a cooldown of 8 seconds. While this does use the same damage formula as the other two stills, for some reason it gets all V1 and V2 damage bonuses except for the on grenade throw anointment. I don't know why this is, as this is V2 damage, however it will come up again later on that this just does not apply to some things and this is one of them. And finally, body and mind. Killing an enemy will add splash damage of Amara's attuned element to her melee hits, which will last for 12 seconds, but this timer will reset on kill. It is important to note with this, while it is a melee melee still and triggers on melee damage, the actual damage of body and mind has nothing to do with the melee damage that you deal, it just triggers from it. The base damage is entirely its own base damage as listed on the card. Now we'll get into the slightly more complicated formulas, starting with Unweave the Rainbow. When you deal melee or splash damage to a frozen target, it will add extra damage of Amara's attuned element. This damage, of course, is actually a still damage, which does give it 31 times mayhem staling. It's also worth noting that the percentage of your damage which gets taken and put into Unweave the Rainbow only stales from the base damage of your weapon and your gun damage multipliers, which leaves the formula looking like this. While well, everything beyond the base damage is the same as everything else that we've discussed so far, the base damage is of course your based hard damage of your weapon times your gun damage multipliers, which is then multiplied by the percentage given to you from Unweave the Rainbow, which is 0.11 per point in the still, which can go up to 0.66. And then because this is still damage, it gets the 31 times mayhem staling. Now, when it comes to the melee side of Unweave the Rainbow, everything is similar here again. However, the base damage is your melee damage times your melee damage multipliers times 16 for the melee damage mayhem staling, and then against a frozen target times 3, as melee damage is 3 times effective against frozen enemies. Then of course, multiplied by the Unweave the Rainbow percentage and 31 times mayhem staling. But yeah, as long as you understand this skill and kind of know how to build for it, Unweave the Rainbow can hit for some crazy stupid numbers. Next up is Remnant, which will create a homing orb on kill that will carry overkill damage. This is another formula where the only big difference is the base damage, in which Remnant has its own base damage which scales with the actual still level, but also scales off of overkill damage which is the total damage that you dealt in the shot that killed the enemy, minus the enemy's health that was remaining when that shot was taken. This then gets the 31 times mayhem scaling. Now this total damage again encompasses all the damage dealt within that killing blow of the enemy, which means it will double dip any of the multipliers that were applicable to both that final shot and remnant itself, which pretty much means the only things that it can't double dip is gun damage bonuses and a couple other miscellaneous modifiers. But still damage, elemental, splash, v1, v2, and debuffs all have the potential to double dip. Also just don't put any more than one point into remnant pretty much ever. The base damage is such a small percentage of the damage that it's just not worth increasing. The overkill getting mayhem staling is the strong part. And finally we have indiscriminate, an ability which gives Amara 
separate shots, a chance to ricochet off enemies and towards other enemies. This chance is 10% per skill point up to 30%, with a damage reduction on the ricocheted shots of 50%. Enemies which are affected by phased rasp, however, have a 20-60% to 60 chance of a shot ricocheting, with only a 25% damage penalty on those ricochets. Indiscriminate shots are also able to crit as long as they hit the enemy's crit spot, which leaves our damage formula looking like this. You have the damage of the shot times 0.5 or 0.75, depending on if the enemy is grasped or not, times 5.5, which is our mayhem scaling for this skill. You then get the usual elemental V1, V2, splash, and crit, and our debuffs. However, the splash and crit only applies, of course, if the bullet actually crits or if the bullet deals splash damage. You may also notice that while this does get mayhem scaling, this does not get skill damage modifiers. This is another example of the on grenade throw anointment also not applying, at least not applying to the actual indiscriminate shot itself, however, it will still scale the damage of the initial shot. But everything else aside from on grenade throw can double dip, meaning elemental, crit damage, v1, v2, splash, and your debuffs are able to crit. Though again, splash and crit, of course, when applicable. Now, when it comes to bonus elements, things can get a little bit more complicated here. Bonus elemental damage from the next two mags anointment has no effect on indiscriminate, however, the action still end 50% element on shields and grenades does. It will apply to the main projectile, however, it won't have an effect on the indiscriminate shot's damage, however, it will also apply to the indiscriminate shot separately. That being said, though, it doesn't totally apply as it doesn't get the mayhem scaling of indiscriminate, meaning it will deal whatever the indiscriminate shot's total was divided by 5.5. Global elements, however, like Urad and Revolter, will apply to both projectiles, very similarly to how 50% ASE does, where it doesn't actually interact with the total damage of the indiscriminate shot, but just applies over top of both the main and secondary projectiles. However, this one will take the mayhem scaling into account for the damage. So if you're using 100% URAD, your URAD and your indiscriminate proc will be the same damage. Now, infusion will actually function somewhat as two completely separate projectiles, meaning that each individually has a chance to ricochet. For example, if you had an incendiary weapon with shock infusion, the 40% shock damage may ricochet off as its own projectile while the incendiary doesn't, or vice versa. However, they can both ricochet at the same time and can also hit separate targets. Another thing to note with that though, somewhat related, is if you're using something like a shotgun or just any sort of multi-pellet weapon, every single pellet has an individual chance to ricochet off. That's about everything there is to go over here though. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any other questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will gladly respond and help out where I can. I will also have a Google document with every single one of the damage formulas that I've covered in this series down in the description below. But along with that, of course, down in the description will also be a link to my Twitch channel where I'll be live right after this video goes up. I'll also be live here on YouTube and just under that Twitch link is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.